uh, making maximum tolerated dose. It wasn't a really well thought out <laughs> um, or highly constructed kind of strategic decision. Uh, basically, the way that I decided to tackle the subject was I was already making animal rights documentaries, um, and I wanted to make a bigger contribution. I had done some shorter films, but hadn't done a feature length film. Uh, but I've always been really inspired by, by, you know, films like Earthlings and Peaceful Kingdom. And I felt like I could contribute something different. So I was kind of like looking to do a bigger project. Um, in 2010, I met a couple people who were, uh, formerly involved with the animal experimentation industry. And so, uh, it, all of a sudden kind of struck me that there was a story there. The name Maximum Tolerated Dose came from the first interview that I did. It was something that the first interviewee mentioned as one of the uh, tests that the scientists will perform to, uh, to determine uh, whether or not a drug is, is toxic or, or at what point exactly what it says, at what point, what is the maximum tolerated dose of, uh, of a product before it becomes fatal or persistently toxic in, a, in an individual. Um, and I just felt like it was a, a kind of oddly appropriate term for the film because of uh, the subject matter and looking at essentially what was the maximum tolerated dose of uh, that that these people and these non-humans could take uh, before they had to before they had to exit the industry. You mentioned that, you know, it's kind of a tough nut to crack and that people uh, see it as maybe uh, a harder thing to tackle than, say, animals used for food. But um, I tend to disagree. I think that um, because of the scientific aspect of uh, animal experimentation and medicine and all the related issues around that, I think it has the potential to be a, a much more like quote unquote winnable issue than animals use for food. People, there's like a lot of cultural history of using animals for food. Um, but with animal experimentation, it's actually a much shorter uh, span of time that we're dealing with. And we're already seeing people who say, if we can get the same results without using like, like public opinion is much more in favor of not using animals for vivisection if we can avoid it. Um, so I, I do think it's actually in, in a lot of ways, a much more winnable, winnable thing. So my response to that is always, twofold. One, I always tell people that if they want to know my personal ethical position is that I don't think that human diseases are animals' problems to solve. Um, if we want to solve human health problems, we should be endeavoring to solve those using human models as much as possible. Um, that being said, I recognize that the animal experimentation industry isn't going to go away overnight. And I also recognize that a lot of people say that historically we've discovered X, Y, and Z because of animal experimentation. So I don't suggest that uh, we should throw hundreds of years of science out the window. Um, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. And we, uh, but we're in a position now where as technology continues to advance, uh, we can strive to uh, create treatments and medicines that improve human health outcomes without harming animals. And I think we're all generally in agreement that if we can do something without harming animals, why wouldn't we? I often get asked if the film has made an impact in that community. And uh, I often tell people stories of, of researchers who have contacted me and who have said, you know, I used to uh, participate in this industry and now I don't. And I wish I had seen your film at the time. And um, I've had a couple of people uh, since the movie has come out who were at the time current uh, animal researchers who have decided to leave the industry. Uh, but I don't. You know, and I think that my film was maybe like part of this 
part of the soup that they were in that made them decide to do that. I think in a lot of animal rights circles, we think of AR filmmakers as activists, and I am an activist, and I have been an activist. But in making the film, I'm a filmmaker, and I'm and I have a lot. I take a lot of consideration of like aesthetic elements. Um, it's it's really important to me that those aesthetic elements uh, are there and that they're polished and that it's cohesive and and that sort of thing because if it's not then it doesn't feel like a film to me <laughs> so uh yeah it's al it's always kind of strange to talk about because uh some people get kind of taken aback by the idea that uh you can aestheticize a horrible subject but i mean i think you can and i think that my film and and lots of other films that are are coming out now are are kind of evidence of that As far as uh, AR-related uh, documentaries, myself and uh, Dr. Lauren Corman have been uh, starting to put things in motion to, uh, to do a film that looks at uh, um, animal rights and intersectionality. So looking at, looking at how animal rights overlaps with other social justice, social justice issues and how other social justice issues overlap with animal rights. They can uh, order a DVD from our website uh, or they can download the film from our website. So if people go to MaximumToleratedDose.org, MaximumToleratedDose.org, uh, there are links there to buy a DVD or to download the film uh, in HD. Uh, DVDs are almost out, um, but the download link uh, will be active for as long as uh, as long as the internet's around, and uh, eventually the film will be on YouTube. I've kind of been surprised that no one's uploaded it there yet, but uh, at some point it, uh, it'll be up there as well.